welcome to Morning Faith uh, Wednesday night Bible study. God is so good. He is so good. I'm going to read from Psalms 18 tonight, just the first three or four verses, and it says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, and he is my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my God. He's my strength in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord. He is so worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Yes. Lord, we just come to you tonight and we thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you. You are so good. And God, we just come into your presence tonight. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. And we ask that you would come into our midst. And God, as we worship and we praise that our, our um, attention and our love towards you, oh God, that the, the, the glory of God will fall in this place and we will be so um, taken back, oh God, by your presence in this place tonight. And we'll worship you and we'll praise you and we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. stand tonight worship for a bit. Just give you a chance to wave and do whatever there. We're together again. Just praise in the Lord. All right. We're together again. Oh, 
in the glory of the King, knowing that you're here, that you have set us free. You're here, and I worship you at home. We're amazed by who you are, and your presence makes us whole.
Yeah. 
Take care of my business. Yes. I'll take care of yours. Yes. Hallelujah. Pastor, we were talking, Pastor Nelly and I this morning. Says, How powerful that is. It's really deep. And it's not just some little light saying that tickles your fancy. But it's a deep, deep truth. And uh, so I'm glad you're here tonight uh, to take care of his business. Amen. Because yes. while you're here tonight, he's working for you. Yes. Ways you cannot imagine. Amen. You're here doing his thing. He's there doing your thing. Amen. Can you believe that tonight? Oh, yes. Lord, we just thank you. You're good, Lord. My goodness, you're good to us. Lord, the world doesn't understand. The natural man doesn't understand. But thank God we're, we're supernatural people, Lord. We got your spirit on the inside of us. And we are just so grateful. Holy Spirit, we stand in awe of you tonight. You're so welcome in this place. You're so welcome to move, manifest, reveal yourself. Do whatever you want to do tonight. And Father, we just yield our sounds. We yield our members to you. That you might use us in any way you might see fit. And Lord, we just we promise we'll have listening ears tonight. We're here to hear what the Spirit is saying. Whether it's uh, through, through entrance or through the word or just speaking to our spirit but we have listening ears tonight because you are speaking you are talking to us and Lord you, what you've got to say is always good it's always good for us yes. it brings us revelation it brings us inspiration it brings us direction and it can even bring us some correction too and so in correcting us Father you're good because you love us and you don't want us to go down a path that's going to cause us harm and hurt. So you will correct us. And we thank you for it tonight. We give you glory. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. And bring the moon down. And we should bone the down. She bone the down. She dab a bushy come down. She bar the bushy come down. And a massacre. And a massacre. She bar a rabash. Put a bishiki. And a bashik. And a bashik. Zombra bunga zanga dede vinda dida mita kisa kita rata basha kata basha. Zombra bupu kusha kusha kata rata. Lord, we just magnify you tonight. Glorify you. We honor you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your gifts tonight. We thank you for utterance in the Holy Ghost. We thank you for gifts of power, gifts of revelation being in manifestation. Thank you for the angels that are in this place tonight. Thank you, said the angel of the Lord, and camp around them that 
that fear, that reverence him. So we just reverence you tonight, Lord. Lord, there's angels and just encamped around this place, around this church, around this property, around our children and families, my God. Lord, we thank you. Satan's got a plan, but your plan, God, is bigger. And, and it trumps the plan of the devil. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment against us, we do condemn it in Jesus' name. Oh, we thank you. Weapons might be formed, but they're not going to work. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you the praise. We give you the thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All we worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. All we worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. is good. Amen. So, uh, I asked uh, uh, Brother Ian if he would minister tonight and it's always, uh, you know, you're always in for a really, a really, really good feeding tonight. If you love the Word of God and you want to go a little bit deeper, uh, uh, Pastor Ian's going to take us uh, into some deeper places and bring some inspiration, revelation to us. And we're going to see the Word in a brand new light. And so it says, walk in the light. First John 1 said, walk in the light as he is in the light. So uh, light comes for us to walk in. If you walk in that light, you're going to get where he wants you to be. Yes. All right. Do you want the do you want the headset or do you want this? That's fine. That's fine. All right. You look so handsome in that mask, I think. <laughs> uh, I hate to say it. I think. Praise God. Yes. Glory to the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. Praise you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Adore you, Lord. Worthy to be praised, Lord. Worthy to be praised, God. We give you honor. We give you glory. We bless your holy name, Lord. We bless you. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, God. We praise the one who was and who is and who is to come. Amen. We praise the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Lamb who is slain. We praise the Lion of Judah. Exalt you. We extol and we lift you up, Lord God. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Glory to God. Glory. <laughs> Glory. 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 Glory to the Lord. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't he good? Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he? Praise the Lord. Oh, I don't even need to speak. It's so so glorious. It's glorious. Glorious in this place. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh. <laughs> Isn't he good? The Lord is good. Amen. It's good to all. He's good to all. Amen. <laughs> Praise you, <the> Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> ah, don't need to work you guys up today. That's good. That's good. The Lord's done the work for me. Made the ground ready. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, my first question was going to be, who here wants to give glory to God? Amen. Who here wants to give glory to God? Everybody. Everybody says yes. We just demonstrated it. My next question was going to be, how? How do we give glory to God? How do we give glory to God? Anybody know? Worship, yes. Praise. With our mouths, with laughter, amen. Amen. We give glory to God in all those ways, and, and, and God receives it with great joy. He loves when His children worship Him. But it's a trick question, too, because there's, there's something that no one's mentioned yet. How do we give glory to God? Thanksgiving. Still. Jesus said it. He said, herein do we glorify the Father by bearing much fruit. Amen? Amen? And so, and so we, we give Him glory through our lives. We give Him glory through our praise, through our worship. We tell Him through our mouths, through our tongues, through singing, through thanksgiving. But we give glory by bearing much fruit for Him. Because we are here for a reason. We are here for a purpose. And we are here to represent Him. And as His representatives, we are, we are like, Adam and, like Adam long before us, Adam and Eve, they were given the purpose of, of sowing and planting and reaping and harvesting and cultivating and all of those things. Everything started in a garden and it started in a place of, of cultivation and where fruit was constantly being produced. And when Jesus died on the cross, he did it to give us the power to produce. When the Holy Spirit came, he gave us the power to produce and to, and to bear much fruit for him. And so that is part major part of why we're here. I mean, there's, there's many directions you can go on your purpose and your destiny and your calling and all these things. But it really comes down to the fact that we're like trees. We, the Bible compares us to trees. Why does he say bear much fruit? Why does he say I want you to bear fruit? He's comparing us to trees. And so if we are compared to trees, then we need to understand how trees operate. We need to understand how trees are nourished, how trees are fed, how trees grow and flourish. Amen. And so, and so the, the word the Lord was giving me was, are you rooted? Are you rooted? Where are you rooted? How are you rooted? These are important questions we need to ask ourselves. We need to dive in to where our root system is because the root system is the most important part of the tree. How many know that? It's the part you don't see, but it's the most important part of the tree. We'll get into that. Praise the Lord. So the question is, are you rooted? And most, most of you would say, yes, I am. And the fact that you're here tonight most likely indicates that you are rooted because, because the world has a pull on you. The world has a pull on all of us, and, and the fact that you're here in the house of God, you're here to, to fellowship with other saints, you're here to hear the word, and you're here to, to, to praise and to worship, so that means that there must be some root system going on with you. You're not blowing here and there like a tumbleweed. You know, you're here, and you're planted in this, in this uh, assembly for a reason, and you know that, and that's why you're here. That's why you're here tonight, because you know you're here for a reason. Praise the Lord. So you can answer, yes, I am rooted. Yes, I am rooted. But the next question is, where are you rooted? And in what are you rooted? Because roots can go all over the place, can't they? And roots, and roots can, can uh, go in some pretty bad places. Roots can get run over by the lawnmower. And they can, they, can, they can come across all kinds of problems. So where are you rooted? That's an important question. You know, everyone thinks that they're rooted in a good place, but Paul said, examine yourself. Why did Paul say this? He said, examine yourself. 
daily. Examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. So he said, make sure that you are rooted in what you claim you're rooted in. Make sure that you are because, why make sure? Because the world is your testing ground and, and the storms of life will test whether you really are. Yeah. You know, you, you can fool your, you, you may be able to fool uh, a couple people, but you can't fool life. When life hits you, if you're not rooted in something solid, then, then you're going to tumble. Yeah. You're going to stumble. Mm -hmm. You're going to fall. And great is that fall, the Bible says. So where are you rooted? And how are you rooted specifically? Even if you're one of those ones that, that, that gives the right answer. I'm rooted in love. I'm rooted in the word. I'm rooted in God. But how? You need to be more specific than that. Because the devil is more specific than that in your life. And so you need to be more specific how you are rooted. And are you rooted well? Are you well rooted? Because good roots produce good fruits. Amen? Good roots produce good fruits. A tree will not produce fruit unless it has good roots. And so if you're looking at the fruit, what you're seeing is evidence of a good root. And that's why Jesus said you will know them by their fruits. Amen? You'll know them by their fruits because if they have good fruits, that means they're rooted in something good, which means that they are friends, not enemies. Remember, remember when the disciples kept saying, Jesus, Jesus, these people are, they're, they're, they're healing and they're doing ministry and they're not with us. But Jesus said, if they're not against us, then they're for us. You can tell that when they're, when they're doing the work of the Father, then you can, then you can judge the fruit means they have a good root. Amen? And we'll see later that just because someone does good works doesn't mean that they're, that they're well-rooted. We'll get to that. But, but there's, there's certain signs that, that even Jesus said, if they're not going against us, then they're for us. Amen? Amen. So good roots produce good fruits, and having good roots allows the power of God to flow through you more effectively especially where it comes to healing and deliverance. And I say these two and I, because there, there's the mission of God is to save, deliver, and heal every person on earth. You believe that? Yeah. If you don't believe that, you're probably a Jehovah's Witness or somebody who, who only thinks certain, God only wants to save certain people. No, it says that it's his desire that everyone would be saved. It's a desire that everyone would be saved. And Jesus died so that everyone could be healed. Amen. Jesus died so that everyone could be free, so that everyone could be delivered from the power of darkness. Do you believe that? Amen. If you believe that, you're in the right place. So salvation is, it deals with our spirits, right? Our spirits get saved. When we go out into the world, we're seeking to, 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 to bring salvation to, to the spiritual lives of the people out there in the world, but deliverance deals with the soul. Deliverance sets the soul free, and healing sets the body free. So God wants all three parts set free. So God is wanting to save, to deliver, and to heal every person. Amen? And he wants to do it through you, and that's why if you have good roots, you can better produce the power of God wherever you go, and bring that power of healing and deliverance to those around you. Amen? Amen? And that's what we see. And not only that, but he gives us the ability to have the gifts of the Spirit. And the better rooted you are, the more gifts you're going to operate in. Amen? I mean, that makes sense because the gifts... Are, are very reliant on faith, right? The gifts of the Spirit, they're not reliant on whether God likes you. They're not reliant on whether God thinks you're the best person for the job. They're reliant on your 
connection to the Holy Spirit inside you through faith at that moment. You're connecting by faith. If I were to prophesy right now, it would be in, I would do it through faith. Amen? If I were to lay hands on somebody, I would do it through faith. If I were to, to perform a miracle, I'm not doing it out of my own power. I'd be doing it by connecting my faith to the power of God. Amen? And so, and so you, have to, you have to be able to, to uh, expect God to, 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 to give you the gifts of the Spirit as supernatural boosts when you're, when, you're, when you're ministering with people. Amen? Now, tongues has been misinterpreted for us to think because, because we think the gifts only operate by the will of the Spirit, people think I can only speak in tongues at certain times. And we've already, we've talked about that much in this church. That's not, it's saying the gift of tongues only operates at certain times which the gift of tongues is leading to a, the gift of interpretation, which is a form of prophecy. And so that is as the Spirit wills. But you can speak in tongues. You can pray in tongues whenever you want. How many believe that? Yes. Amen. Now here's the next test. Can you lay hands on somebody to heal them at any time? Yeah. Or do you have to wait for the Spirit to direct you? A lot of people trip up on that. But Jesus said... You lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He didn't say that that is only certain times, only when you're directed, only this, only that. He said, if you do, if you lay hands on them, they will recover. Amen? So healing all the time. You've been given power over how many, how many demons? All. How many spirits? All. And so... You can, you can perform deliverance at any time, anywhere, any place. The spiritual gifts, as I said, they're like supernatural boosts. They're like, none, none of you look like video game players, but maybe some of you remember in the old days when you'd get a boost, a little power pack when you're playing a game, and you get this little uh, Mario Brothers, you get this mushroom that makes you bigger or whatever, or something that would give you a, a better weapon. That's what the gifts of the Spirit are like. Like you're going around, you're laying hands on people, they're getting healed, you're casting out devils, you're deliver, you're doing this stuff, and you're getting people saved. You're doing that at any time that you want to. At any time that you dare to operate in those, those will work for you. And then the Holy Spirit, who who He's in the He's leading and directing when He's going to give you that spiritual gift to help boost even further. And so those spiritual gifts are like little power packs that help you at the right time, the ones that you need. What's the best gift? The gift that you need right at that moment is the best gift. Yes. Amen? Yes. And if those of you who are here Sunday night, uh, Brother Greg, Prophet Greg, spoke over me and said that I need to expect for power gifts. That's something that I hadn't really put myself out there for too much. Um, I was getting more and more comfortable with uh, utterance gifts, and I was getting more and more comfortable with revelation gifts. When I used to speak at the barn, I might operate in the word of wisdom or word of knowledge. I was getting more comfortable with those gifts, but then he said, power gifts. <laughs> power gifts, and my knees knocked a little bit when he said that. Power gifts. Amen? So, so you don't have to be afraid of the gifts of the Spirit. They're here to help you. They're, you should be healing, delivering, and setting people free. But as you're doing that, the Holy Spirit can boost that with His gifts. Amen? So I want you to see that. I don't want you to get that mentality of the gifts are only for certain people. And so therefore, I just need to sit and wait for God to use me. No, He'll use you. He wants you to produce fruit. He wants you to set people free at any time. But he will decide when you get the boost. Just a cha little change. Pastor said that the end will change your way you think about things. And if I can do anything, because not everything I say is original, but I, I want to try to come from my own uh, different direction so that maybe you can see things from a different light. It's not that anything I say is is better or supersedes anything pastor says, it's that it's a different 
direct, it's a different way of looking at it. And I like, you know, when Pastor Nelly speaks, when Pastor Kathy speaks, or Kim, or any of, any of the people that speak here, they're all different. And they all have a different way of looking at it and a different way of bringing things together. But they all are rooted in the same place. Hallelujah. So if we could go uh, to Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 and 2, please. I don't know if I'll get everything in today, but um, I'll do what I can. Uh, he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. I love this verse. I love these two verses. Your imagination can just go to where this is where we're, we're heading. This is where we're going. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Yes. So this is a prototype of what a tree should be. Yes. This is a metaphoric representation. I mean, it is, it is a real tree. Mm -hmm. This is a real thing. Yeah. John wasn't seeing a hallucination. This is a real tree, mm -hmm. same tree that was there in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. For some reason, Adam and Eve never partook, took of this tree. You know that. Yeah. They never ate of this tree. No. Satan tricked them. You know, I think this tree was in a high place. I, I don't think it was, it was necessarily uh, easy to access. I think it was in a high place. And on the low place was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They never made it to that high place. They stayed on the low place because there was a little snake serpent that tricked them to think that that was where it was at. But this, is, this is kind of a, a picturesque representation of Jesus. He is the tree of life. He bears fruit every season. He's, he's constantly bearing fruit. When he came on this earth, he was constantly giving of himself. He bore fruit. He never was lacking when anybody came to him. Notice that? Nobody ever came to him and left starving. They all came to him and they were able to partake of the fruit that he bore. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. So the gifts of the Spirit and the, and the, and the faith for healing was always present with Jesus. Now, people debate about whether Jesus could or couldn't heal in certain circumstances, but you can't debate that the, the healing was always there. It says the power was there to heal. And so we can be like this. We can be like this where we produce fruit every season. We're producing the fruit of the Spirit. We're producing spiritual fruits. We are ready to give healing, to give deliverance to whoever comes to us. We are affecting the nations. Amen? Amen? And we see in Ezekiel, if you'll turn to Ezekiel 47, verse 12, we see almost the same imagery, but slightly different. This, heaven, this revelation imagery represents, I think, Jesus. He is the tree of life. But Ezekiel 47, 12 says, By the river, upon the bank thereof, on, the, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees. All trees. So that's you and that's me. All of God's trees can reside on the bank of his river. Whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his month. Because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Same thing that was in Revelation. You know, you can be, you can be a tree of life to whoever comes to you. You can be a tree of life to yourself, to your family. You know, you don't need to be miserable. You don't need to be downcast and downtrodden. You don't need to have your family um, feel helpless in the face of your family. You can be this if you're planted by the rivers of living water that, that God has there. This is how we're supposed to operate. Where we are rooted makes all the difference. Amen? Compare a tree that's rooted by the river of living water compared to a tree that's rooted in the desert. Compare those two trees and see the difference. 
between those trees. Where we are rooted makes all the difference. We go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. We all know this. We are to be rooted and grounded in what? Love. love. In love that we may know that you being rooted and grounded in love, the prisoner of the Lord is... <laughs> I think we went too far there. Uh, chapter 3, verse 17, and might as well go to verse 18 now. That being rooted and grounded in love, you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Next verse, please. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. So Paul says we are to be rooted and grounded in love. And I know we all know that. And if you ask Christians, are you rooted and grounded in love? They'll say yes, probably before they even know what they're saying yes to. And love in the Bible is, is, is a, it's a much bigger word than, than, we, than we have in English. In Greek, they have to use many words to describe love, because there's not one kind of love. Amen? In, in English, we have one word. You know, I can love my cat. I can love pizza. I can love my wife. And I can love the Lord, all with the same word. And obviously, those are different loves. And obviously, you don't love God the same way you love pizza. Or you shouldn't. Or the way you love coffee. <laughs> Or the way you love Krispy Kremes. <laughs> but in, in the Word of God, it, <laughs> in the Word of God, it says that God is love. And therefore, love is God. You can say it both ways, right? And so if you're, if you're rooted and grounded in love, then you're rooted and grounded in God. And that's why it says you're filled with all the fullness of God. Right? But if you're rooted and grounded in love, and you're rooted and grounded in God, then you're also rooted and grounded in the Word. Amen? Amen? So these are all interchangeable ideas. And so what I would present to people, because I, people are quick to say that I'm rooted in love. You know, I, 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 I'm, I walk in love. I'm, I'm, or they might even say, I'm... I stand on the Word. I'm standing on the Word. I'm grounded in the Word. I'm rooted in the Word. You know, all these Christian statements we can say. But then I ask you, which Word are you rooted in? Which Word? Which Word? Because it's, you know, it's generic to say I'm rooted in the Word. Which Word? Which Word are you standing on? Which word are you grounded to? Amen? If you need a healing, and I say, which word are you rooted in? A lot of people would say, what? By his stripes I'm healed, right? By his stripes I'm healed. I'm standing on, by his stripes I'm healed. And then my next question is, where is that? And a lot of people go, I, um, I don't, uh, Jeremiah or uh, Timothy, uh, I, I think it's Isaiah, maybe 50, well, it's Isaiah 53, 5, right? And if you're really rooted in it, then you should know that. Why? Because you should have read it many, 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 many times. If you're, if you're grounded in Isaiah 53, 5, you ought to know where it is. And I'm not saying that to be critical. I'm not actually thinking of anybody here when I say that, but I know there are people that say, I'm standing on the word, and then you go, which word? Which word are you standing in? Which word are you rooted in? Because it makes a difference. It does matter. It does. Because if you don't know, then your roots are really shallow. And the devil can, can trip you up really easily if you don't know where you're standing, where you're rooted. It's also 1 Peter 2.24. Matthew 8, 17. 
And you should know, if you're, if you're rooted in that, you should know in Isaiah it says that by his stripes we are healed. In Peter it says by his stripes we were healed. You should know that because you've read it many, 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 many times. Amen? So again, I'm not saying to be critical. I'm saying if we are going to say we're rooted in the word, then that's going to mean something. We better know that what we're rooted in. We better have read that many, many, many times. Because something doesn't get inside you very quickly. You know that? You can even memorize something, and it's not yet pierced through the surface. It's up here. It's up here. I still remember the very first um, long scripture that I memorized, which was Psalm 23, when I was about eight years old or something. I still remember it. But I'll tell you, um, if I wanted to, to, to really live that, that, that passage of scripture, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. If I really wanted to live that scripture, I'd have to more than memorize it. Amen? And I'm not fully living that scripture. It says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I can't say that I'm living that scripture. And so therefore, memorizing it when I was seven or eight years old has not made that uh, a firm root in my life. We have to have strong roots. We have to have tough roots. Because we are living in tough times. How many believe that? Amen. You don't have to look too far to see we are in tough times. Times we have to be toughly rooted. And so how you are rooted, not just where you are rooted, but how you are rooted also matters. How you are rooted. How firmly you are rooted. Are you a surface root or are you a deep root? How you are rooted matters. Because your roots are going to help you produce the fruit of the spiritual fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, those are produced in you. And those are important to have in you because God will be looking for those. When he says, I want you to bear much fruit, he's looking for spiritual fruit to be produced in you. And there's, and there's also, there's, 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 uh, there's natural fruit too. There's financial fruit. We can produce financial fruit that blesses the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God doesn't operate on bananas. It operates on money. And so there's a financial fruit. Amen? There's a financial fruit that, that can be produced from being properly rooted. There is uh, fruit of the... I was going to say fruit of the looms. Fruit of the womb. <laughs> Children. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28 says... You should be blessed in the fruit, <laughs> the fruit of the loom, the fruit of your loins, the fruit of your womb, the, the children, the fruit of your increase, the fruit of your, of your cattle and your, you know, everything is fruit to God. Everything is being produced. And we need to have good roots in order to produce good things like that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So roots need to spread out and go deep. Roots need to spread out and go deep because roots help to supply nourishment to the tree. Amen? So roots will always be seeking nutrient-rich soil and water. Roots will always be seeking nutrient-rich soil and water. And a good example of this is what happened to me last fall Everything was going good. You know the story. <laughs> All of a sudden, plumbing starts backing up. And I've had quite a lot of uh, plumbing experience since the, uh, the lockdowns and all that, where everyone's home all the time, and so plumbing becomes more of an issue. But uh, all of a sudden, everything starts backing up. And what happened was the trees around our neighborhood, their roots were all looking for nutrient-rich soil and water. Yeah. And so the easiest and most convenient place to go was where this, all the sewer drains out. And so that's where all the roots were combining and connecting. Yeah. And that caused a lot of trouble for us. 
But that is the natural order of it. The roots will always seek out where there's nutrient-rich soil and water. And so your roots should always be going to where you're going to be fed from the Word. Amen? The Word needs to feed you. It needs to supply you. The Word needs to... It says that my God shall supply all your needs. Amen? But this is how He does it. He does it by giving you the Word in due season that's needed to affect your life. Amen? One word from God can change your life forever. How many believe that? One word from God can change your life if you can connect to it, if you can get rooted and nourished from that word. It's not, it's not going to nourish you unless you are buried in it. Amen? Your Bible should be falling apart. If it's not, then it's probably a replacement Bible, right? I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. If your Bible's not falling apart, it's a replacement Bible that you just got and you're breaking it in. Amen? I've gone through quite a few in my life. Now, we're in the electronic age, and so I do give you that grace too. Some people, some people would rather have electronic Bibles, and that's whatever. That's cool. I mean, Jesus didn't do it, but that's okay. We'll forget that. So, so the, uh, the, the, the roots of a tree, they seek nourishment for the tree, but they also anchor the tree. Yep. Roots will anchor the tree to handle weight and weather and storms. Amen? When it rains, have you ever noticed when it rains, a tree gets really heavy? All that rain settling on those branches and on those leaves, it pulls those trees right down. In fact... On the Marysville Highway that I, that I go to go home, um, sometimes in, in the heavy rains or in the ice seasons, the birch trees will just bend over like this. And I'm amazed they don't snap. They just, they just bend right over onto the ground, almost doubled over. But those are strong roots. Roots are meant to handle that weight. Roots are meant to handle the weather. Roots are meant to handle the storms. When those high-velocity winds come, the trees that are well-rooted will still be standing after the, after the wind has stopped. Amen? And that's what we want to be. We want to be like that. Think of those big buildings you see when you go. Anybody ever been to New York City? Anybody ever been to Chicago? Even Toronto has some big buildings. And every single high-rise building you see, those things would never last unless they could go really, really, really deep into the bedrock. You cannot anchor a skyscraper in the topsoil or the subsoil, or even in the gravelly area underneath that where there's just broken rock. You have to go through the topsoil, through the subsoil, through the gravelly area till you get to the bedrock. The bedrock is an area that has, that has been under extreme pressure and heat and pressure for so many years that it is, it is something you could anchor anything to. That's this. The bedrock. This has been through lots of heat and pressure for many, many, many years, and it stood the test of time. You know, the Nazis tried to stomp out the Bible. Uh, the philosophers tried to get rid of the Bible. Communists, atheists tried to get rid of the Bible. They tried to stomp out the Word of God. Going back into ancient times, the Jews, they tried to snuff them out and get rid of this Word. It has stood the test of time. It is bedrock. And that's why when the Lord spoke to Pastor, He said, I'm going to give you three bedrock truths. And one of them was that the Word is true. God cannot lie. and Faith is a must. Amen? These are bedrock. And if you're going to build a skyscraper, you've got to go all the way down and anchor in the bedrock. Yeah. If you don't, then you'll be in the shifting soil, and that building will just go like this until it topples. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Same with a tree. Mm -hmm. They found that the root systems of a tree have the similar architecture to the branches. And so when you see the branches, the roots look very similar in the way that they're spread. And the question is, which comes first? 
chicken or the egg, the roots or the branch. And the Bible has something to say about that. In Romans 11, start, uh, Romans 11, 18. It says, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Okay, go to verse 16, please, just a few verses back. For if the first roots be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. So according to the Bible, if your roots are holy, then your branches are holy. If you have, if you have good roots rooted in something holy and strong and bedrock, then everything you produce from that will be holy. Amen? So it's not the producing that comes first. It's the rooting that comes first. Amen? You get that? Because we get in a lot of guilt and condemnation if we're not producing well enough. How many have felt that? You feel guilty because you don't feel you're doing enough for the Lord. Well, your first job is to get more rooted. Because if you're not producing enough, then you're not rooted enough. And it's a good sign. If there, if, when Jesus saw the fig tree and there was no fruit on it, he knew the roots were bad. And when Peter saw it the next day, it said it was dried up from the roots. It was dried up from the roots. Jesus saw no fruit. He knew the roots were bad. And so get the roots fixed and then the fruit will come. And so that takes a lot of the guilt and the condemnation off of us to, and the pressure to produce for God, to produce fruit, because we can't do it on our own. We can't do it rooted in our own self and our own uh, selfish lives. We can only do it rooted in, 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 in Him. Another interesting thing about roots is that a well-placed uh, a tree with well-placed roots can actually help other trees that aren't doing so well. That's right. Did you know that? Yeah. Awesome. A tree with well-placed roots can actually transfer nutrients mm -hmm. to another tree that's not doing so well. Yeah. And they proved this with an experiment. I, they took a fir tree and they covered it with a great big tarp mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So they cut off the sun uh, so it couldn't use photosynthesis. There's a little high school, middle school science word for you, photosynthesis, where the tree takes the light of the sun and, and transfers it into food for the tree, right? Well, the tree couldn't use photosynthesis because of the tarp, so it began, so it should have begun to, to really worsen and decay, but what happened was there were birch trees that were giving it what it needed so that when they checked the uh, amount of carbon-12 and carbon-14 in, inside the trunk, mm -hmm. it had the right amount. Yeah. It survived the lack of sun for a time. Mm -hmm. What does that tell us? That tells us that we can help each other. Yeah. When somebody's going through a dark time yeah. and they cannot, they cannot produce on their own, they cannot... Uh, function the way they should on their own. They're going through a dark time. Other people who are doing well, who have well-placed root systems, can help that person out yeah. and can transfer goodness to them and can transfer. The Bible says that give me. It says that I have been given the tongue of the learned, of the disciplined one, that I may speak a word in due season to him who is yeah. weary. Come on. Amen. Sometimes you're, the word that comes out of you when you are firmly rooted in this and you speak to somebody else, then that word can, can give them, uh, it, in due season, it can take that weariness and give them strength and give them hope. And you can feed somebody else through that. And that's another way where the gifts of the Spirit come in too. The word of wisdom the word of knowledge, huh? um, uh, Sunday night when Brother Greg was speaking over certain people, couldn't you see that it was just hitting that person yeah. in that? It was, some people were visibly moved by what he was saying through the Spirit. 
So, so that gift of the Spirit that he was operating under was actually causing people to have hope and have strength yes. because of that. So we can transfer. Amen? Amen. That's a good word. Hallelujah. And that's, that's something I didn't know about trees. So that, that's, a, that's a new thing for me. So the question is, are you anchored? And we're running out of time. I'll just quickly, uh, Luke 6. Um, Luke 6, verse 47. Jesus said, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built his house and digged deep. He digged deep deep, get that? And laid the foundation on a rock. That's that bedrock. And when the flood arose, and the stream beat vehemently upon that house. And uh, in Matthew it says, when the, the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and they could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the streams did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So you notice in both of these circumstances, they both heard the word. Both of these individuals that Jesus is describing, they both heard the word. The only difference is, one of them, it says, he did it. One heard it and doeth it not, and the other heard it and did it. And I submit to you that that hearing the word and doing it is not just carrying out the actual step-by-step um, -step of the word, but doing it, the first step of doing it is meditating on it. I submit to you that the first step of doing the word is meditating on it. Because Jesus said in uh, another parable, he said, he who hears and understands. And so the meditation part is is, is what helps us to understand what the Word is telling us. The revelation. the revelation, exactly. And if we skip that step, a lot of times we end up trying to do the Word, but doing it without understanding it. And that leads a lot of times to, to uh, good intentions, but bad results. How many have seen that? Somebody, somebody just you know, heard a word on TV from a TV preacher, and they go out and they try to do it, but it's good intentions, but it's bad results because they didn't understand it. They didn't meditate on it. And, and, and the Bible tells us in, uh, well, we'll just go there, uh, Psalm 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Okay, I'm going to come back to this verse. Go to verse 2 though, please. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he what? Meditate, Meditate day and night. Amen? So, the, in the next verse, can we go to the next verse? He delights in the law, and he meditates, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Does that sound good? Yeah. That sound what we want? Amen. Yeah. That's what we want. But that started with meditating and delighting yourself in the word and meditating on it, right? Getting yourself to a place of understanding the word that's been spoken to you Allowing it to be revealed to your heart, like Kemp was saying, that revelation. Mm -hmm. Then we move on it and we become planted in it like a tree by the, by the living water. Now, I'm not giving you license to be in this long period of, oh, I'm just trying to understand, I'm just trying to figure it out. No, there's a danger of being too long in that area. There's too many people who who have been sitting under faith-filled sermons and teachings and preachings for 10 years, for 20 years, and they're still in that time period of, oh, I'm just, 
I'm just waiting for this to develop in me. I'm just waiting for, no, it shouldn't take that long. Even a real tree doesn't take that long to, <laughs> to, to produce fruit. I mean, come on. I mean, and we're all guilty of that. And it's, it's easy to get in that, that stationary running on, running on that treadmill. But, but I submit to you, every word you hear from the Lord, you meditate on that word. You, 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 you allow it to, 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 to go over and over over inside of you. And you test yourself. You test yourself and you, and you examine yourself to see if you really understand that word and you're rooted and then you're ready to go and you're ready to go. And that shouldn't take a long time. It just, it takes that, that mental energy. It takes that mental energy to sit there and think about what was just said to you. How many have gone home after... Sunday morning or Sunday evening or Wednesday night and just and just gone home and, and just as you're driving you just you just start to think about what you just heard and, and the Lord can even speak new things to you and give you scriptures on top of that. I've done that so many times. That's how I've got some of these messages is just from other things that pastor has said or other people and I just I just think about it and I just let I just go over it and go over it and then the Lord begins to reveal to me other things regarding that. You have to desire. It says you have to delight yourself in the word. If you delight yourself in the word, you'll want to do it. Amen. If you delight yourself in the word, you'll want to accelerate to the point where you can do the word and be productive in the word. Amen? That's what we want. Can we go back to verse 1 real quick? I know uh, time is sped up. So where you're rooted is important, how you're rooted is important, but every once in a while one of your roots slips into a bad area. This is a warning. It's a blessing and it's a warning. It's a, it's a warning in a blessing. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. That does not stand in the way of sinners. Does not sit in the seat of the scornful. Amen. You, you have to watch where your roots go. Yes. Because if your roots start to stray from the word of God. And they start to go in these bad areas. Even, even, the, even areas that don't quite seem all that bad. But maybe just talking about somebody. Sorry. Maybe it's just you're talking to another person after church. And you just say. You know, wasn't that person just ridiculous? They got up there and said all that stuff. That, that wasn't the Lord. That wasn't God. That was just that was just their flesh. That person was in the flesh. Gosh, they're ridiculous. I wish they would just sit down. You know, we've all done little things like that. That it doesn't seem like you're. You know, like I'm not quite gossiping. I'm just speaking the truth. You know, that's that old line. Just just speaking the truth in love. <laughs> It becomes scornful. It, it, it can get into an area of scornful. There can be a critical spirit that gets into people. And if your root is in the critical spirit, if one of your roots slips into there, you're getting nourished by that crit critical spirit. And that's not good. That's not good. Uproot that. Amen? I want to show you one more thing, and then I'll cut it off. Hebrews chapter 12. And uh, verse, we'll start with verse 14. It says, To follow peace with all men in holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Verse 15, please. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of what? Bitter. Bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. Now I said earlier that a good root produces good fruit. Well, what do you think a bitter root produces? Bitter, bitter fruit. fruit. Have you ever taken an apple off a tree and you thought you were going to bite into a sweet, delicious apple and you bit into a bitter, gross, crab apple tasted, <laughs> worm infested apple? I've done it. Have you ever gone to... I've gone to we, we would get a lot of our fruit from Costco, and a lot of times it's good. 
Every once in a while, I think it was in the truck, way a little bit too long. Yeah. <laughs> you'll get those strawberries or you'll get those whatever, and, and they're just, you bite into one and it's rotten. Yeah. Bitter roots produce bitter fruits. And this, this verse right here is actually the first verse that the Lord gave me for this whole message. Where are you rooted? And when I first heard this verse, I started thinking of people who have a root of bitterness. And the Lord arrested me and said, I don't want you to think about other people who have a root of bitterness. It says, examine yourself. Examine yourself, whether you be. And examine the bitterness in your own heart. Examine if you have any roots that are, that are tapped into bitterness. Are you tapped into bitterness somewhere? Because it says that it will defile many. Many are defiled. It doesn't say a few. It doesn't say a small portion of you. It doesn't say a remnant. It says many of you are defiled by this. Amen? And so, and so we need to not look at other people, not think of other names, not think of... If only that person would change, if only that person would stop being so bitter and angry and so hateful and spiteful. And start thinking of yourself and thinking, does this apply to me? Am I tapped into some, some, some bitter waters? Because James says sweet and bitter can't come through the same source. So eventually one of them's going to win. Eventually one of them's going to win. And unless you uproot the bitterness then it's going to win eventually. Because bitter will always win over sweet if it's not uprooted because it will defile. It will defile. I mean, if you were drinking from a river that you knew 10% of it was polluted from the stream, the mill up the stream, that water's not going to taste as good. That water's not going to be as healthy to you and you're going to know, when you, every time you drink that, you're going to think about that defilement. I used to climb, do some mountain climbing, camping, stuff like that, when I lived in New Hampshire. And um, we would drink from the streams a lot. And um, they told us, watch out, because uh, the beavers and the ducks and different ones will urinate in the water. And you can catch different, you know, different small, not major diseases, but small things that can really mess up your time. So, so we were always had to watch out, t t test the water, taste the water, and, and test it like that. But in your own life, test the water, test the roots, test the fruit, test, test, test. Because just because somebody has a lot of leaves doesn't mean they have a lot of fruit. Say that again. Just because someone has a lot of leaves, just because they operate in the power of God doesn't mean that they have the fruit, that they have a lot of fruit. Jesus went to a fig tree that had a lot of leaves, but it didn't have fruit. It didn't have fruit. So, so don't, uh, you know, don't ever think that God uh, is going to overlook the fruit part of your life. Don't say... God, I did this in your name. I cast out devils. Remember those people that said, Lord, Lord, I cast out devils in your name. I prophesied in your name. And he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. They had no fruit. They had no spiritual fruit. And so, hallelujah. We need to know where we're rooted, how we're rooted. We need to go deep. We need to spread out. We need to help each other. And we need to watch the bitterness. And watch the scornfulness and the criticism and all those things. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Bill, did, uh, did we do offering? Yeah. Okay, could mind if I have Bill do that? I, I miss okay. having Bill do the yeah, offering, so sure. that's going back, going back a while. Right? Yeah, it's been a while. Actually, I should leave this on for a minute. <laughs> Uh, 
I gotta grab my offering. It's kind of funny. Um, I was sitting over there and I just anticipating the possibility I might be asked tonight. You never know, right? That's good. I mean, after all, Ian is prophetic. <laughs> and uh, uh, can we have uh, Proverbs uh, three uh, nine and ten, please? Oh, everybody, get an offer on mobile. I see that's all taken care of. You know, it's so funny. We we race to get to our our word we want to bring out. We forgot to ask anybody if they need one of these. Anyways, um, yeah, so the Bible says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, King James, and with the first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns, thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So honor and blessing, they go hand in hand. You know, when we honor the Lord, he will bless us. God is saying, you know, if you bring the, the, the first fruits of your substance, uh, then this is what he's going to do. Your barns are going to be filled with plenty and your presses are going to burst out with new wine. But I was just, you know, I don't even normally even use the, the passing translation. I have a copy of it at home. And I was just kind of flipping, uh, flipping through it on, my, on my phone. And man, I'm telling you, I, do we have the passing tra translation? No? Anyways, I just, I just found this. It's, it's Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. But it just really hit me. Because it says that in the passing translation, glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your first fruits, uh, and with every increase that comes to you, that's your first and best. I mean, if something comes into your hand, if you're blessed with 50 bucks, give at least five. And then every dimension of your life will overflow with the blessings of God. Amen. That just really hit me. Amen. That when we honor God, when we, we glorify God with our wealth, that every dimension of our life is going to overflow with the blessing of God. Amen? Amen. All right, so I'm just going to hold, let's hold up our offerings tonight. And Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that as we honor you, Lord, as we glorify you, God, as we seek ye first the kingdom of God, that all these things shall be added on to us, we thank you, God, that every dimension of our life is going to be blessed it's going to be good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you can go ahead and take that out. All right, so Wednesday night. That is tonight. Okay, I got that covered. Wednesday night. So, okay, and Ian, and Ian spoke tonight. That was really good. <laughs> That's awesome. And, um... Friday morning is the War Room with Kathy O'Hara, yeah. and uh, that's going to be awesome. Even the promo for it's awesome. Yeah, 9 a.m. Can't, can't forget that. And then we have two services coming up on Sunday. We have our Super Sunday services Sunday morning, and we have Holy Ghost night. Mm -hmm. And we all know what to do on Holy Ghost. Speak. Uh, we need to speak in tongues and not be prepared, but be ready to flow on the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And if anybody would like prayer, I'd be happy to pray with you. Amen. Building you up, Bill. I even forgot the term right here. There you go. Thank you.